Okay, let's do this. So basically, this is the kind of video you need. It's the kind of video you've been looking for. It doesn't look like the kind of video you want because it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have all the effects, the captions, the sound effects, the transitions. So if you have difficulty focusing, uh, if you have difficulty giving attention for any period of time, you may struggle with this, but I will promise you right now, if you watch this video in full and you apply what I teach you here, you will become a millionaire. Now I can say that with an amount of confidence and justification because I am a millionaire. In fact, I'm a multi-millionaire officially on paper. And that is post tax with money taken out of my bank accounts, taken out of the business. Uh, that's what I have in assets, savings, investments, property, and everything else. Now, ironically, when I first started in my business over 20 years ago, it was in a little room, not dissimilar to this. Now, if you're like most people online, you'll be looking at this and you'll think, there's no way this guy's a millionaire. Look, he's, he's dressed in this, you know, crappy hoodies in this tiny little room. This is BS, right? And I would probably feel the same thing. But the point is, when I started trying to become a millionaire, I had a very different vision of what that meant and what that would look like and what that would feel like. You have this vision that it'll be all mansions, it'll be Bugattis, it'll be cigars, women everywhere. But actually what you quickly realize is there are things far more valuable than all of that. For example, family. You see, I've got pictures of my uh, family, my kids here uh, and my wife. My business enables me to spend a lot of time with them. That's really why I set it up in the first place, not just get personally rich, but to get time rich. So how do you do this? Well, it's a question I get asked all the time. How do you make money online? I'm going to map it out for you. To do this, the first thing you've got to realize is you are going to have to put in time and effort. You're going to have to get a skill of some kind. You can't just start out and start doing stuff and a couple of hours later make a ton of money. You can make some money really quickly, particularly with AI, which I'm going to talk to you about. That is the definitely, definitely a big shortcut now, which was not in existence when I first started in the year 2000. Now, what I first started to do, because I'll tell you the story of what I did and some of the things that I've tried that worked and didn't, and you can either take them or leave them. What I first tried to do is build a website and sell ad revenue space, advertising space, right? So I built this whole community for seniors. And the idea is we would sell uh, revenue. We would sell, um, sorry, we would sell advertising space for revenue on that site, right? So we'd attract a lot of people of an older demographic and advertisers would want to place their ads on that site and make money. Now, the only problem with that was we didn't know how to get traffic and we didn't know how to create content. The internet is content. You must never, ever forget that. People try and take money out of this ecosystem that is the internet, but they forget to put anything into the ecosystem. And content is what you need to put into the ecosystem to get money out. And it doesn't matter what form you extract money from the internet, whether it's through ad revenue, by running ads on your site, whether it's by selling phys uh, physical stuff, digital stuff, selling services, content is what needs to go in for that money to come out. It could just be ad content. You don't need to do organic uh, YouTube videos and TikTok videos and Facebook and all that stuff, but you do still need to put content into the ecosystem. Now, whilst we knew that when it was me and two friends that started this business over 2000 years, uh, 2000 years ago, feels like 2000 years ago, over 20 years ago in the year 2000, it was me and two friends. We knew we needed content, but we hadn't thought about how we we're going to create it. Right? And this was for seniors. So we didn't really know how to speak to that demographic. We started writing a lot of the content ourselves. We tried to find people who would write, write it, but it's kind of chicken and egg because without that content, you don't get traffic from the search engines. People don't find you. And if people don't find you, then you're not getting visitors to the website. Then you can't sell those eyeballs for ad revenue. And plus you don't have more people coming in that's going to create the content. So to break that cycle, I actually learned how to do search engine optimization. So I learned how to get ranked in the search engines, how to do backlinks and things like that. And that was the first business was the senior site. We made a bit of money with ad revenue. We got to a point where we we're doing $19,000 a month with ad revenue. And then I realized more valuable than that is what I knew and what I'd learned about getting traffic. 
During that time, the other two friends fell by the wayside. It was too much like hard work for those guys. We were all, all of us were simultaneously uh, working full-time jobs whilst trying to set this business up and get it off the ground. It was too much for them. I kept going. When it was just two of us, I was like, this is impossible. Then the, the last friend bailed out on me as well, left me completely on my own. Uh, and I remember sitting on my couch 20 years ago now, 23 years ago, and I was like, I'm never going to do it. I can't do this now. But I kept going. So that business kind of faded away. And I then started the consultancy business using everything that I knew about how to get into search engines and rankings, which I knew a lot about traffic. And I did that locally and I would travel around, right? So recognize what we've, what I'm saying here is there is a skill, right? There's always a skill that you bring to the marketplace. You've got to have something of value that people are like, wow, that's worth paying for. Now, this is the bit that people don't like, particularly when they're starting out, like, well, I'm not an expert. Uh, it sounds like a lot of work. It is to get a skill and I don't want to do it. I just want a quick side hustle, right? And this whole side hustle thing really annoys me because whilst I... I have used it in some of my videos. I know it does appeal to people. I know people want to get that. You're never really going to get a side hustle that makes you meaningful income unless it becomes your full hustle, right? People just think, oh, I can just do something on the side and make, you know, $10,000 a month on the side. You can't, right? You can make a couple of hundred dollars on the side, but what's the point of doing that? Because it's just extra work on top of your job anyway. You're far better to take a hustle and rather than it being a side hustle, make it a full-time hustle, right? Really throw yourself into it. So that's what I did with the consultancy business. And then I realized there was a lot more value in the knowledge that I had. And not only could I teach people locally, because I was going around local businesses, driving around and giving them consultancy, I realized I could actually package this up digitally and sell it to a global audience. And that's when I started selling digital products. And my first uh, full digital product launch was in the year 2006. And it taught people how to get ad revenue from their website. Because I'd done that, right? So I'd done something. I was making $19,000 a month from my website through ad revenue. And then I thought, well, let's teach this. Now, that digital program that taught people that did $250,000 in sales in a week. So again, it did a quarter of a million dollars of sales in a week of a digital product, just a download, right? Now, that was obviously a lot more money than the money I was making from doing the thing. Now, I realized at that point that I needed to teach what I'd learned. As long as I was getting results with what I'd done, I could then teach what I'd done, and I'd probably make more money by teaching it than by just doing it alone. But I still continued to do it. Because there's a large people, a large body of people uh, on the internet that are just teaching stuff and they've never done it, right? They'll go buy a course on, you know, becoming a, a social media uh, marketing agency and then they'll become a social media marketing agency, right? And they've, they've never done social media. They've never marketed. They've never had clients. And then they'll start training other people on how they can then become an agency. And it's and the snake starts to eat its own tail. What I was always clear on is that I would always get results first and then teach people how I'd gotten those results, right? And that's how you step up the ladder. Notice how I started my first business and had no results and worked my ass off when other people fell by the wayside until I got to the point where I did get results. Then I leveraged them. I leveraged those results to make money in that initial business through ad revenue. Then I leveraged those results by getting in the search engine, getting all the traffic and saying to other businesses, hey, I'll consult for you because I know what I'm doing and I've got these results. And then I leveraged it again by going to a global marketplace and packaging up this knowledge digitally and selling it to thousands of people worldwide for almost zero cost to me because it was a digital download and I could scale, right? Because what I found with the consultancy is I was hitting a ceiling. I was hitting a ceiling of I can only be in so many places at one time. I started hiring people. I thought about getting a physical office. I was like, no, I don't want to do this. That's not, that's not what I got into this for. I got into this to get away from that. Okay. So it's at the consultancy. Then I did the digital route and then the consultancy just faded away. I was like, well, there's no point doing that now and traveling around and spending, you know, an hour or two to do consultancy when I can get paid a quarter of a million dollars in a week to, to train people digitally worldwide. So that's what I started doing. And I trained on all the different things that I'd learned and all the different things that I'd done in my business uh, up until that point. So in order for you to get started online, you're going to have to have a skill. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to take a quick drink of my green tea, which, by the way, is pretty much my only vice. When I first, first started, when I first started in my uh, journey as an entrepreneur, I was unfit. I had no, I was doing no exercise. I would go for days at a time without leaving my apartment. Um, I was living in a one bedroom apartment. The bedroom was about the size of this. This, ironically, this room right now that you see me in, is the smallest room in this house. This house uh, costs about $600,000, paid for it in cash, no mortgage. I've not had a mortgage since uh, 2008. I paid my mortgage off on the previous property I used to own. And I say we've now got several million dollars uh, personal net worth. So when I first started, I wasn't healthy. I was I was a wreck. I was basically, my bank balance, which was tens of thousands of dollars in debt, reflected who I was as a person, very simply. I ate poorly. I uh, digested mentally poorly. I was watching a lot of TV, playing video games. Uh, I would smoke uh, gear. I was drinking a lot. I was just a, it was a mess, right? So to expect that I was then going to somehow radically, you know, change my financial position without r radically changing this was stupid. But that's what I thought. But over time, the bricks of building a new person started to fall into place. So I started exercising, started uh, jogging every day. That led to better food consumption. Uh, that led to realizing, okay, what you take in physically into your body is just as important as what you put in mentally. So then I started tuning out the TV, stopped watching news, stopped paying attention to that stuff, stopped reading books, which I'd never really done before until, you know, university, yes, but not in terms of the business. Started consuming, started getting with mentors, coaches, going to events and consuming information that would help me grow. And then I also realized that, look, my body is the golden goose. Right. If I screw this up in any way, if I'm ill, I can't work, I can't grow the business. If I've got low energy in the afternoon when I slump, again, that's downtime. People are going to catch me up and overtake me, my competitors. And if I'm putting stuff in my body, which affects my ability to think, even the day after, like with drink, why would I do that? If I'm working so hard at something that I want to achieve and grow a business, why would I sabotage that even for one day a week? It makes no sense to me. So quit drink, quit everything, went super healthy, uh, went vegan for a long time. Uh, now I do eat uh, fish, but got my diet nailed down, got regular exercise six days a week nailed down, uh, got mental diet sorted out in terms of what was going in, started consuming and learning a lot of information and got really, really focused. Now, this didn't happen quickly. This was all done uh, over a series of years. But basically, you will become a millionaire when you change into a millionaire. You become physically a millionaire become before you financially become a millionaire. The universe will give you the million dollars or the million pounds when you've demonstrated that, that you are ready for it. Now, the only people that get it before they're ready are lottery winners. And if you've done any kind of research and seen any kind of news stories about lottery winners, what you'll find is a lot of them end up broke because they're not millionaires. They're millionaires in the bank, but they're not millionaires in here. And they're not millionaires with their, their body and how they look after themselves. They can't manage themselves. They can't manage their finances and they can't manage their time and their desires and their impulse drives. So they end up broke. A lot of them will spend the money really, really quickly because they're not actually a millionaire. If I lost everything now, and I have lost everything multiple times in my business, because I've been doing it, for, say, for over 2,000 years, 20 years, um, I can get it back relatively quickly because you can't, cannot take out and take away what's, what's in my brain and my experience, my skills, right? You can take away the banks, you can take away the bank account, you can take away the houses and the assets and the investments and the pensions and all that, but I'll just do it again because I am a millionaire now. It doesn't matter if, if the money goes away, I'm still a millionaire, right? I've still got it. But it takes time to get that. And that's what people don't want. That's what people are not prepared for. They want to say, no, I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 20. I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. That's just arbitrary. You've got to work away at it, right? So that's more general. Let's get more specific. So what I did is started selling training information. You're going to have to have something that the market wants. You need to go where the hungry crowd is. This really cool story of a professor at university, and he's got all these students paying attention to him. And he said, right, students, it was an exercise. You're going to start selling hot dogs from a hot dog stand, right? Now, there's one thing, said the professor, that is going to make you sell more hot dogs than anything else. What is it? And all the hands shoot up, right? All the students put their hands up. Oh, yeah. is it price? He's like, no. 
Uh, somebody else said, is it the ingredients of the hot dog? No. What about marketing, said somebody. Is it the marketing? No. What about the brand or the colours? Is it that? Is it the condiments? Is it the staff that you've got? Uh, is, it, is it your supplier? Is it your profit margin? What is it? Nobody got it. The professor said, those are all good guesses, but the number one thing that's going to get you selling most hot dogs and making the most money is a starving crowd. If you go and open your hot dog stand outside a football stadium, when thousands of drunk and hungry people pour out, it doesn't matter what the brand is. It doesn't matter what your price is. It doesn't matter what the hot dog tastes like. It doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't matter about any of that stuff. If you get a starving crowd, you've sold out. Now, that's a super powerful lesson that you need to start with in business as an entrepreneur. Most people start backwards. They have an idea. I've got this thing. I'm going to create this thing. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm like, whoa, why? Why are you going to do that? And they'll say, well, I'm passionate about it. I've got an interest in it. It's something that I've, I've always followed. And I'm like, well, wait a second, wait a second. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter what you want. It matters what the buyer wants. Okay, I was speaking to my daughter the other day. She's doing this little exercise at school where they all set up their own little stall and they sell things at school on break times. It's all done for charity. Um, and they were having a discussion. They're selling uh, candy floss and they were having a discussion about what to charge, whether it should be a pound or £1.50 or whatever. And some people in her team were saying, oh, £1.50 is too expensive. It doesn't matter what you think. If the market, if the starving crowd wants to pay that, let them pay. Okay, so you need to be driven by the hungry crowd, the starving crowd first. And I'll tell you in a moment about how you found, find your starving crowd, your hungry crowd. So you've got to let the market decide. You don't decide what works and what will sell and what a good product is. And yet 95% of entrepreneurs start here. This is what I call Frankenstein syndrome, where they go into the laboratory like Dr. Frankenstein. They create this monster and they release it and they're like, hmm. Why isn't anybody like this? How can I now sell this? Right, you'll see it on all these shows on TV, like these hotel inspectors and Hell's Kitchen, all these kind of things. These restaurant owners, yeah, I set up this restaurant. Um, you know, I love to cook, and I've set up this restaurant, and now I'm like, how do I how do I get people to come in? I'm like, you are starting this backwards. You go where the hungry crowd is. Okay, so right now, the second that I'm talking to you right now, the hungry crowd online is really, a lot of people is AI, artificial intelligence, okay? There's a huge demand for information about AI, about how it works, how you can use it, how you can make money with it. And it's no surprise that a lot of the videos on my channel recently, I've been teaching you step-by-step step how to use AI to make money. And as I said earlier, you can do that quickly and make you know, a small amount of money with AI. It's not a business, but it is kind of side income using AI. So it's a starving crowd. Now, when I started out over 20 years ago, I did not have AI. Artificial intelligence was not a thing. I couldn't just go and type into ChatGPT and get content. I couldn't just go into mid-journey art software and type something in and get images created. There's huge opportunities right now. But for you, you've got to bring something to a market that already exists. You don't want to create a product or service and try and find people that are going to buy it or how you're going to sell it. You want to find something that's already selling and just do it better. Now, another mistake that I made when I started out is for the first two years, I was trying to do everything my way. I went online, I was looking at what other people are doing, and I was like, I don't want to do it that way. I don't like how they've done that, right? Stupid. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares what you like. You're not buying it. And yet I had this sort of egocentric personality thing where I was like, no, I don't want to do it that way. I'm doing it my way. Well, guess what? My way didn't work. And for two years, I bossed my not trying to do it and made zero dollars during that time. It's only when I started learning from other people that had already been there and done it and realized why they were doing it in that way that I shied away. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like the way they're doing that. It doesn't agree with me doesn't matter. If you're in business, the business is about generating profit. And if people buy stuff, you know, if you put out what people want, they will buy it. And that's where I came up with this concept of chocolate covered broccoli. Now, I'd never heard of this before. I came up with this concept about 2007. Many people say, oh, no, it's existed before then and you didn't invent it, Cheney. I never heard anybody talking about this. I thought I'd come up with it. Maybe I did. I don't know. But the idea is that 
chocolate is something that people want, right? But if you sell people chocolate, their teeth will fall out, they'll get fat, they'll get addicted to caffeine and sugar, and it's not healthy for them, and they won't remain a customer for very long. So you can't just give people what they want. But if you try and sell people what they need, which is broccoli, full of all the nutrients, the vitamins, is good for them, it's got fiber in it, they won't buy it. Because they don't want it. Right? People buy what they want. They don't buy what they need. That's why most houses in Western Western countries have got larger TVs than they have libraries. Right? That's why most people spend more time watching Netflix than they do reading a book that can improve their lives. Right? People do what they want, not what they need. But your job as a vendor and an entrepreneur is to give people both chocolate covered broccoli. You attract them for what they want, but you give them what they need. An example of this would be a cereal that I saw advertised on Facebook the other day, which was for uh, weightlifters and CrossFit trainers and gym bunnies, those kind of people. And it's basically a cereal that is high in protein. It's also vegan. It's um, gluten free. So, but it gives people what they want. What they want is easy, convenient food that tastes good. Maybe it's got a little bit of a sweet taste to it, but it's got all the nutrients that they need. So after a workout, they can feel good about eating this stuff, which is allegedly good for them, better than normal cereal and sweet cereal, but packs a punch in terms of the protein uh, and is convenient to, to eat and, and tasty, right? So it gives people what they want, yummy food convenience, but it also gives them what they need, the protein, the nutrients, and the macros and all that stuff, right? So that's a classic example. Now, a business like that that would not work would be, you know, here's a sack full of protein powder for half the price. That's what you need, right? You need protein. But yeah, but I've then got to mix it up. I've got to make it. It's all powdery. It doesn't taste good. People don't wouldn't buy that, right? Nor if you were a target in that market, if you just said, here's a bag of sugar. Well, yeah, sure. People would want that. But over time, if they bought that, their teeth would fall out. They wouldn't lose weight. They wouldn't put on muscle. They'd, they'd gain fat and they would never buy from you again, right? So you're trying to give people what they want and what they need, which is important. Now, right now, as I say, AI is such a hot topic online that it's one of the best ways for you to get started and get skilled up. If you immerse yourself in AI just for the next week or two weeks, just study AI, go on Twitter, follow AI accounts, watch each of the AI training videos that I've got right here on this channel that show you step-by-step -step how to make money with AI, not only could you go and do those things and make money with AI, but you can then teach other people and you could then actually create training about how to use AI and you could sell that. Because it's really one of the quickest ways to get started. There's a huge starving hungry crowd of people that have these twin forces, okay? Pain and desire, which is why people move and take action on anything. Pain is something obviously people want to avoid. And right now there's a pain or a fear about AI is going to replace me. I'm going to lose my job because of AI. So you tap into that fear and that pain while simultaneously tapping into the desire of wanting to make money, wanting to achieve that freedom. It does both of those simultaneously and it rides, rides a wave that is super hot right now and probably will be for the next few years. So if I was starting out right now, or if you'd walked into my home today and said, how can I get started? I would say, learn AI inside and out. You don't need to become a 10,000 hour expert. You just need to dive into it. Watch some of the videos on my channel, go through that. Use those to make a little bit of money, get some results, and then teach other people. Okay, You're going to have to give some, away, uh, some stuff away for free. right? The way that you build an audience is you build trust. And you build that trust by demonstrating you know what you're talking about. You can say, oh, I know what I'm talking about and I've done this and that, but nothing's going to demonstrate it better than you just showing somebody. right? So you've got to lower the wall of uh, trust, lower the wall of protection that you're hiding your content behind and just give stuff away. Now, one of the best ways to do this is to give training away for free and sell the implementation. right? So you give all of the information away for free and people are like, why? Why are you? This is amazing. This guy's teaching me all this stuff about artificial intelligence. I cannot believe how much content I'm getting here. And all you say is, look, if you need my help to implement this, contact me and here's the fee. So they go off and they can use it and get results themselves. And then if they want to use you, then obviously there's a fee. 
And obviously, as you can probably tell, that's what we do in our business. All the training that we give away is completely free here on my YouTube channel. But if you want to use me and my team, we've now got 15 full-time people. If you want us to grow your business for you or even build an internet business for you, then obviously there's a fee for that. But it's optional. You can just go off and apply all this training for yourself. So hopefully this gives you some ideas, some inspiration. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this, and I'll speak to you soon.